Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another video. If it is your first time stopping by, my name is Noelle. I make videos here on YouTube about home makeovers, home decor, fashion, and sometimes travel. I also blog at aaelblog.com, which I will have linked below. Enough about me though. I am so excited for today's video. As you saw in the title, I am sharing with you my bathroom makeover. That's why I overbuy. I know my neighbors are probably like, this girl comes to her house every day with a bag. So the first phase of this makeover was just addressing some of the more pertinent items in this bathroom that I needed to change in order to use it every single day. And those three things were the faucet, the light fixtures, and the lack of mirror in the bathroom. So when you're looking at the before pictures, as you can see, I kind of had one of those old school faucets, very, very low to the sink. And I was basically having to bend over in half to, you know, cup water, brush my teeth, wash my face, pretty normal things you do in a bathroom. So one of the first things that I did was change out the faucet. This was something that I got my landlord to approve. I asked if I bought the faucet and kept it there, would they install it? And they did. So this is the faucet that I got. I'll pop it up right here. And that was changed out probably within the first couple of weeks of living there. The next thing that I knew that I was going to need to change was the light fixtures. I had a boob light above me and a circa, you know, 1992 vanity light above the sink. And I knew those things needed to change. One, because they neither of them really provided the correct light. And it also just, they clashed with each other. So I went to my local Lowe's. I just popped out the boob light for a flush mount LED light, which I'll pop in here. And then I also just changed out the vanity light for a more aesthetic decorative light. And me and my dad did that you know, in a matter of an afternoon. And that made a huge difference. The LED light is more of a soft daylight. That's the one that I basically use all the time. And then the more aesthetic vanity light has a soft yellow glow. And I don't really turn that on very often. Sometimes I only just really use it at night, but I do love the way that it looks. So it serves a purpose. And then the last thing that I knew that I was gonna change immediately was either install a medicine cabinet or a mirror. I did not want a medicine cabinet. I don't have that many products, so I knew that I just wanted a mirror. I did some searching and I couldn't find the mirror that I really wanted right off the bat, so I just went to Ikea and I bought the cheapest mirror that I could find for the time being. So that was the first phase of this makeover. So phase two was when I really was like, I need to get focused and I need to get realistic about what I can actually do in this bathroom. I can't change the tile. Like there are a lot of things that I wanted to change that I just knew I couldn't do. So when I started looking for inspiration, I made sure that I was really honing in on tile. My bathroom has a lot of tile. It has huge 18 by 18 gray tiles on the floor. It has subway tile basically all the way up to my ceiling around my shower surround. And then I also have kind of a weird sub subway tile inlet above my sink. And while I know there's a lot of options like peel and stick, which I did try and didn't work out for me, I knew that I was gonna have to like lean into this tile. So I kind of started looking at inspirational pictures that celebrated tile in a bathroom. And once I found these three images, I knew that I needed to really just kind of hone in on the fact that, you know, I have gray tile, I have white tile, but I can make it beautiful. And as you see in these pictures, these designers, chose to, they chose to use a lot of tile in their bathrooms, but they also celebrated it. It is light, airy colors. It is gray and white mixed in. And these tiles are also laid in a traditional subway inlet style. So I think seeing these pictures really kind of got me to a place where I was like, okay, I can work with the tile. I can make it beautiful. And that was kind of like my jumping off point. Then in my search for you know additional inspiration on the Pinterest and Instagram streets, I ran into a uh, designer, Rebecca Wakefield. I actually believe she's an interior stylist, but she did design her own home. And when I saw this picture of her kitchen, I was like, oh, this is it. Like, this is what I can do. I thought it was so beautiful. I thought her use of the green with the choice of stone and that like really pretty walnut cognac wood tones was like 
I was like, wow, this is just beautiful. This is something that, you know, I can do in my own bathroom that I can put my own spin on. And at that point, that was really like all I needed. I was like, okay, I got my inspiration. I know what I need to do. And that leads us to the actual makeover. So it's Sunday and that clip that you saw yesterday where um, the test paint that I originally bought to just touch up some of the scratches dried that way. It never dried um, back to the original color. So I ended up having to repaint the entire vanity, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It took me like 30, 45 minutes. Um, and I definitely think I did a, a better job this time around than the first time around. So, yeah, it's drying. Today we are tackling tile stuff. So I'm gonna span the camera around and show you. But basically, I think that all the grout in my house was mixed incorrectly, especially in my bathroom. So what you're about to see is my tiled floor. And basically the color of the grout is lighter, closer to the hallway and darker, closer to the tub. And I really think that over time now, because it's gotten dirty and I do clean my bathroom on a weekly basis, color variations is just, it just looks really, really bad. So I bought a grout pen, which I'm looking for in a light winter gray online. Everybody said that it kind of veered towards not white, but definitely significantly lighter than, you know, your typical kind of warm gray, which is what I wanted. Kind of just like lift up the floor a little bit because the tile is gray and then also the grout is a very muddy gray. It kind of just makes the floor look dark. I just want to like take away from that. Then on top of it, well, you'll see behind me. So those are the tiles and my shower. Those same tiles are in front of me, which I'm about to show you. It kind of put up like a sheet of tiles behind the sink which i understand why you know less damage to the wall to the physical walls but at the same time it just kind of looks it, it looks strange because they didn't tile the whole wall they just kind of put like a sheet of eight tiles behind the sink and it also kind of comes up like a weird height so i bought some tile pops that i am going to try here thankfully i got them from wayfair and wayfair basically takes back anything as long as it's within the return window so if i really don't like it um i will send it back but i really just kind of distract from the fact that they put up this actually i'm not trying to distract i i just want to if it's gonna be here i'd rather it be a focal point that makes sense than just a bunch of additional random white subway tiles. So that's what we're gonna work on to show you really quick what I used. Um, if you literally go on Amazon and type, it, type in grout pen, this is what's gonna come up first. It looks like it's by the rainbow, that's the company, but this is going to come up. I saw at least eight colors in my search, everything from black to white, to cream, to light gray, to dark gray, to pink. So you can definitely find whatever, um, whatever you're looking for. And yeah, I would highly recommend having, you know, a cloth that is damp so that you can clean up after yourself because you're basically going to, you know, color in the grout like, like you would color in a coloring book. But, you know, obviously grout lines can be a little bit messy. So you just want to have a damp cloth to kind of clean up as you go. So 
that brings us to phase three. I don't know if you guys will recognize this. My black girls, my black girls probably will. I've had three different hairstyles throughout all of this video and four if you include this one. So that just shows you really how long this process took. Once I decided that I was really gonna do it, it did take about three and a half months. I had to travel unexpectedly for a little while. And then obviously you're just dealing with COVID and delays in shipping. I'm gonna address the elephant in the room, which is the fact that the shelves don't go all the way to the wall. So I or I measured incorrectly. Guys, measure like five times, okay? Like I thought I measured correctly and I probably did, but when I put the order in, I thought I had enough shelves. I thought the order was gonna come with four shelves. It only came with three and then the product went out of stock. So maybe one day it'll come back in stock and I'll be able to, you know, complete the whole entire wall to wall shelf look that I wanted, but I wasn't able to. I think the next thing that really pushed this makeover to a point where I could finally finish it was finding this product right here and Lowe's and finding these tiles. I went to Lowe's that day for, to be honest with you, I don't even remember, but the tile pops didn't work. I bought tile pops, I tried them. It just, it just didn't work out for me. It wasn't the look that I was going for. And I was really just looking up all these videos on can I tile over tile? How do I tile over tile? And while I was walking through the Lowe's aisles, I found this product and I was like, oh my God, why haven't more people talked about this? Like, especially renters. And then in finding like the 150, the tile for like 150, 150, $1 cents a piece. Like I was like, oh, this is it. And it really was like finding this tile that had the gray and the really pretty brown and cognac is what tied this whole entire space together. The shelving, the different metals, the mirror. It really kind of like made me feel comfortable with what I had chosen to do and moving forward with styling and being able to enjoy the space. <sighs> guys, 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 guys. Okay, we're nearing the end. We're finally nearing the end. I'm sure as you're watching this video, once it's edited, I'm definitely gonna make sure that I put in like the actual dates of all the stuff that you see in this video. So you can see that this took like a solid I wanna say three months. It wasn't supposed to take three months, but you know, COVID, life, that's just what happened. Today, we're doing like a lot of like the final finishing touches. I got some new cabinet pulls. I finally was able to get up to Paramus to get these because I bought these before I ended up having to go away. If you haven't seen, actually plug for myself, if you haven't seen my last video, it's my three states in three weeks. I actually ended up being away um, from my house for like a full month, which I obviously put this on hold. Um, but anyway, I ordered these before I left and I finally got to Paramus and I was able to pick these up. So I'm gonna install these today. I'm gonna put up my new Casa Luna shower curtain. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
my bathroom makeover and I love this space. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I have designed many of apartments of my own. I have made many a mood board and I didn't make one for this space, but yet every day I still go into this bathroom and I'm like, wow, I really love what I created here. So if you like this video, please like, Please subscribe it really really helps out my channel it helps out your girl and comment below I respond to all the comments I love the comments I'll be in the comments y'all so I hope to see you guys down there and I will see you in my next video bye